Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this tutorial, we're gonna be learning about a tool called Match Color, which as the name suggests, helps us in matching the color between different images when we are creating a composite. So this tool can be found here. If you go to Image, Adjustments, and select Match Color. So we're gonna soon see how this works, how what all these sliders do. But first of all, we've got three images here. And you've got access to all the three images. The link will be in the description of this video. The first image is going to be mainly for the foreground. So we'll be keeping this person and the rocks from here. We'll be replacing the sky with first of all, this particular sky and then this one. Two skies because both the times when we do this, you're gonna see that some of the settings in that match color function will have to be tweaked around a bit depending on the sky. So it'll be also a good practice to do it twice. And as the name suggests, this function will just, you know, take in the colors of the sky and just make it more realistic because it's gonna impose those colors in the foreground here. And therefore, it's a great tool to use in compositing. So let's get started. So first objective is to quickly select the sky so that we can just get rid of it. So we go to select menu. And these days we have the select sky function. It's automatically gonna make a selection of that. And even though we can, after it makes the selection, we can delete the sky. It's usually always a better idea to keep the sky intact and use a layer mask. So when we do it for the second sky, you're gonna see the importance of that, okay? So just do that. So we will be opening a layer mask. And whenever you open up a layer mask, the active selection is obviously gonna become white. We actually want the opposite, right? So double click on the layer mask and invert it. Or you could have also hit Alt option while creating the layer mask. That would have directly created an inverted layer mask. But we've got what we wanted here. Now it's time to put the first sky onto the image. Now we can definitely drag this on top, but that just takes too much time. So what you can do is just right click on this layer, select duplicate layer. And under destination, we can select this particular image, which is foreground, hit OK. And then this automatically comes right here. So it gets duplicated on this destination. So it's on top right now. We need to just move this down to first of all, at least finish the compositing part of it. And now it's time to use the match color function because obviously the original sky was blue and this color is simply not matching. So. Before we can use the match color function, we need to first of all select the collect correct layer. So we want to do that change of color on the foreground image, which is this layer, layer zero, right? And whatever we do with match color will only affect the foreground, why? Because it has a layer mask attached to it. So this is correct. A lot of times you might make the mistake that you might actually accidentally select the layer mask. So even though this layer is highlighted, make sure this is not the case because now if I go to image adjustments, match color will be grayed out. That means you have to select the image itself. Okay. So now if I go to image adjustments, you will be able to use match color. And it's a very simple tool to use. It actually starts from the bottom part, not the top part. So here you just have to tell Photoshop what is that source image from which you want to extract the colors of an imposite you know, onto the destination. So destination is this one, whatever we selected, but now we have to select the source image. Therefore you have to have these images open in separate tabs because that's when it'll come here. Okay, so make sure these are open in separate tabs. And now remember this is for sky one. So the moment I hit sky one, it's just automatically going to take in the colors of this sky and just put it on the foreground. Now is the time when these three sliders come into play. The first slider is luminance, so this will just help us select the brightness because it produces a change in the luminance, but we can manually control how much brightness we want. So I would just like to decrease it a bit because I felt it was too much. So some, something like this is fine. Next is the color intensity. So obviously, as the name suggests, how much of the colors do you want here? So I can increase it. It's going to increase those colors that it took from this image. If you decrease it, it's going to start to desaturate it. So some, this was fine. I think, so the, almost what we got with the default. Then you have the most two important sliders, fade and neutralize. So before I talk about fade, let me actually talk about this checkbox which says neutralize. 
oftentimes what's going to happen is, and we'll actually be seeing this in some moments from now when we use the second sky, okay? Because the second sky is actually much more intense and more saturated than this first sky. But oftentimes when you're using very strong source images, it can, when you use this tool, it can leave a bad looking color cast also. So if, you're, if you are noticing that, you can hit neutralize. And even if I do it here, even though we are not really noticing a bad looking color cast, you'll be able to see the difference. So if I hit neutralize, it is still gonna produce the changes that match color does. It's just that it takes out that bad looking color cast and this kind of starts to look much better. Another option that you have is if you felt that this took away too much, that you did like those red colors here. So I've disabled neutralize, but another option to make things subtle is this fade slider, which as the name suggests, is gonna fade the effect of everything that we've done with match color. So right now when it's set to zero, think of it like this, that it's full int intensity is being used at zero because it's not fading anything at all. But if I want everything that has happened here, including luminance, color intensity, everything to just fade a bit, I can reduce this. So here, in this case, this foreground will start to become more like the original. So if I was to go all the way, what we'll be seeing is basically the original foreground. We also don't want that, but this can just help you achieve a good balance. So something like this, I think is looking good. So if we now hit OK, if you just compare things to the original, you can see that this looks much, much better and we have been able to match the color. But let's also quickly see the second sky because we'll just have to tweak the settings just a bit. It'll also be a good practice. So what we'll do is we don't need to do everything else. First of all, we'll just undo whatever we did with match color so that that is not impacted and we just need to change this sky, right? So we can do the same thing again. Go to our second sky here, duplicate this and select the destination again as foreground. So it's gonna come there. Now this time you can see this is a smaller image. So we'll just have to scale this a bit, but first of all, let's get rid of this sky because we don't need it, the first sky. And with this selected layer, I'm just gonna hit Control Command T to transform this and let's just stretch this out a bit. Maybe this much is fine, I can hit enter and we just need to move this down. But this time you can see, right, this is a much stronger sky, but just see if I again use the match color function here, this time we are definitely gonna get that bad looking color cast. So let's just wait for it. Sometimes it can just take a bit of time for, for the rendering process to happen. Sorry, actually there was no rendering process happening because I did not select the source, okay? So just skip my mind. So we just have to select the source. So this time that's gonna be sky two. And you can see this time that color cast is really, really bad. So we definitely need to use the neutralize function. And you can see, just makes it really real. Now this looks pretty good, but I would like to just decrease the luminance a bit because this pretty much looks like the end of the golden hour, like the sun has set all the way down. So the brightness is bound to be slightly less. Definitely want to reduce the color intensity a bit. Something like this is fine. And I would also like to just fade the effect just to get a bit of the original back. But here you can see this neutralize function was very, very important to get a natural look. And now we can hit OK. And one final thing that I like to do in these images where the sky is so strong, and this is the reason I don't like to delete the original sky instead, use a layer mask, is because I can go here to this layer mask and just turn down the density of the layer mask so that the original blue sky also starts to show a bit. And this just becomes slightly faded and more subtle in nature. And it's just gonna look much more real. So you can see if I decrease the density of this layer mask, something like this, can you see now that blue sky from the original image is actually showing through. And sometimes it really just helps in just softening the impact of this new sky if it's too saturated. So maybe not this much, maybe something like 70%, 75%, something like that is fine. And now if you come just compare it with the original, you can see that we have been able to achieve our objective. If you are someone who wants to learn the basics of Photoshop and you're still not comfortable with things like layer masking, do check out my free Photoshop course which has around 20 videos and it teaches you all the basics you need to know of Photoshop. But I hope that you like this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.